everyone, welcome to um, this, uh, actually for, for David and I, it's the second webinar of the day. Um, we had one that covered the, um, the uh, the London Open, so and I can see some of you are with us then, so welcome again. Uh, but on this session, we look at what's happening, what has been happening, and what is likely to be happening later on as New York gets underway. But as usual, before we start, may I draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen. As you know, this can be a very risky business, so please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. And here am I with uh, David sitting next to me. And in this webinar, and in fact, all our webinars, what we do is we look at the markets through the prism of our methodology, which is volume price analysis, with the um, all supported by our fabulous quantum trading tools. Uh, I, I like to say this at the beginning because um, it saves going through trying to explain bits and pieces as we go through the webinars uh, with regard to volume price analysis. You will be hearing terms such as, uh, um, as I said, volume price analysis, volume point of control. We talk about the relationship between price and volume and how it can help you anticipate what is likely to be happening next on the price chart, which is something really that's all we want to know as traders. Uh, I know we have uh, people who come along to the webinars who have read the books, who understand, you know, aware of the methodology and, you know, some, some of you also come along who have our tools already, but I'm also conscious of the fact that we have a lot of people coming along who, you know, uh, it, this is all new to them. So I always use this, this just a couple of minutes before we start just to lay out what uh, you can expect in the session ahead. If you're not aware of VPA and you know you've never come across the uh, a methodology which looks at growth, the price action, and the volume, all I can may I suggest you just head over to Amazon, and you can find uh, just Google my name Anna Cooling, uh, not Google, put it into the search box, and all the books will come up there. For forex, you will find individual books to do with the market, but you'll also find what we call the forex trading library. And you can see that it's made up of four books. They are the digital version of the books. The, the little box set comes to $9.99. And in the box set, you will find the, uh, the book that covers VPA, uh, the book that covers VPA as it relates to the forex market. Also, crucially, once you've established the technical analysis bit of, uh, of of trading of which you know vpa is, is the methodology you really then have to understand what are the fundamental drivers for this market the political drivers and also what is happening in related markets and the example i always give is if you are looking at the canadian dollar you really have to be aware of what is happening in the oil market because canada is a huge uh, producer of oil and the two are you know are very intimately connected uh, the other commodity dollars as well, Australia, close a close relationship to gold. All that is explained in the book. So we talk about this and we make these statements in these sessions. And, you know, if you haven't got a clue what we're talking about, that is where you will find uh, the answers to, um, you know, to what we are saying. What we've also done, we've taken it one step further. We've actually developed a full and very comprehensive program. At the moment, it is just for Forex. It is our Forex trading program where everything in the books is taken to the next level. In fact, I'm dealing with an inquiry at the moment from someone who started working, uh, started reading the books, buying all the books and applying the principles and concepts to their trading. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very valid question you know, I've read the books, do I actually need the program? And there's no there's no definitive answer because um, it depends. We have traders who are new traders and have simply taken the books, uh, you know, built on them, you know, taken the concepts and they're perfectly happy. We've had experienced traders who have bought the books and then gone away and, you know, uh, tweaked their tactics and, and strategies. And we've also had then new and experienced traders who bought the books, but then have moved to the program because the program also does include the indicators, but it is really a deep, deep dive into all the, uh, you know, all the concepts that are covered in the, the books will cover so, so much. The program, as I said, there's, there's 7,000 slides that you have 
to go through. So that in itself tells you that there's an awful lot of content in there. But by the end of it, uh, David and I do really believe that you will have an unparalleled um, uh, um, uh, 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 knowledge on how this market works, why it works the way it does. So anything you want to add to that, David? I think that's pretty much it. Is it? So I'm sorry, I just wanted to spend a little time on that because it's a question we get asked all the time. The quantum trading indicators, um, applicable to all the markets, but the ones we have specific Forex ones which we use in these sessions, and David and I use them in our own uh, trading uh, as, as well. They, they are what we call the currency dashboard, and it's these four indicators here. You don't have to buy them as a dashboard. They are available on an individual basis, or you can just buy two, uh, or you can buy the full package. The one we always start with is the currency strength indicator, because that tells us what is happening to a currency in a particular time frame. Is it being bought? Is it being sold? Then we want to see what is it being bought and sold against or not and that we look at the matrix, the array gives us a sense of the momentum in the move that, it, that may be underway and the currency heat map looks at the um, what is happening to the currency pairs across multiple time frames but and you'll see these in action really the best way to see them is to actually see them what is happening uh, in 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 the live markets and there have been some fantastic moves we had some great moves this morning and if you've been following uh, your charts you will know there's been some very strong buying of the British pound and some very strong selling of the euro all picked up by the indicators and the charts and as I said the indicators are from our company quantum trading quantumtrading.com you can buy one a bundle or the full package um, when people ask us who you know maybe don't know us and just want to start we'll say we'll just start with one and for forex we always suggest start with the currency strength indicator because if you then want to upgrade to the a bundle or a full package you'll always get a credit the advantage of going for a full package is and when you have a full package is when we develop future indicators they are automatically added to your package for free you don't have to pay anything extra the the last indicator we developed was in fact um, an index for the british pound you get 24 7 support and all the upgrades to the indicators any tweaks changes they're all included as well and they're covered by a seven day money back guarantee the platforms we cover mt45 ninja trader trading view and we are developing the indicators for trade station which is absolutely fantastic and very exciting quantumtrading.com is where you'll find all the details and prices for the indicators the education program is at quantumtradingeducation.com you do get a full uh, package of indicators with the uh, the program if you have the package and you want to upgrade to the program all you do is pay obviously pay the difference and you select which package you know which platform you would like to use and if you've ever bought anything from us whatever you buy you will get a credit and as we said it's all you need to know to trade forex with confidence and it's here at quantumtradingeducation.com that's it david anything else you want to say you want to add to that do you want to shut them in no. Sorry, we have there's some work going on outside, and there's a, the digger is, a, is a, the dumper trunk is going past, and it's making a, a bit of a racket. Right, okay, just let me take that down. We've got the charts here at the moment. What I've got up here is the Euro Aussie because this is um uh, we were talking actually we were talking about it. Well. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm, all I'm saying is David has got that on. If you've got that on Ninja Trader at the moment, uh, yeah. yeah. The reason uh, I just happened to have Euro Aussie at the moment, not because we were looking at the Euro Aussie per se this morning, it was because um, it's it's a pair that I have a I have a long term interest in to the short side, and I was actually looking at it from the perspective perspective of the Aussie because overnight there was some Aussie news and it was an example. Uh, of news that came in, which wasn't quite so good, was it, David, for job creation? Yeah, but the market took the opposite view in as much that the actually actually went up. And it's one of these situations where the it's the it's the detail in the other in in the other releases which uh, caused the Aussie to rise. I mean, for example, the um, uh, and the bottom line is that the data that came in, albeit job creation was 
was low and below expectation, the unemployment rate kept kept steady, and the interpretation was that meant that the RBA would not be lowering in interest rates in August. In fact, that decision would be probably pushed back to later on in the year. And of course, interest rates is what um, what central banks use to try and manage their economies, all explained in the books and in the program. So therefore, if the market perception... Oh, yes. And there was also one very important element of the uh, employment data that was released overnight, and that's sort of called, it's called the participation level. That is the number of people who are employed on a full-time basis. Full-time employment is considered a good, obviously a good thing. Um, it means the jobs market is, is, is robust and, and healthy, whereas a market that is full of part-time jobs, if you like, you know, a zero contract type job, that is not perceived to be a healthy um, um, uh, labour market, and it was that which uh, which uh, prompted the market to react as it did. As I said, it would likelihood is the RBA is going to push back on uh, lowering interest rates. Well, certainly not in August, and so the Aussie went up. And as I said, and we looked at the Aussie, we looked at the Aussie pairs. And in fact, it was at the Aussie CAD you looked at. You can catch up on the recording. It's up on YouTube at the moment, so I'm not going to go over it now. Which is why I've got the Euro Aussie up at the moment. But what I was going to do quickly, what I did this morning, um, in fact, I'm going to do very, very quickly, is having a look at the multiple time frames that I have up for the CSI, which I also, on the same chart, have the matrix behind it, because this tells us, so obviously, if you've just come to your trading uh, terminal now, you want to see what's been going on, and more importantly, uh, or, you know, what is there going to trade in the session ahead? If you don't focus on one or two pairs and you are on the faster time frame. So basically what we are seeing here, we've got three uh, time frames for the CSI. I've got the hour, the 10 minute, and I've got the six minute. But if we look at the hourly chart, if we see here, this here, it's that seven o'clock. That says nine o'clock, as you say that, as you see there, but it's actually seven o'clock because uh, MT45 works either to the MetaQuotes uh, server, but on my platform, to my broker, I know when it's it comes up nine o'clock, it's actually seven o'clock local time, which is actually um, before the London Open. And the reason a pound shot up, or in fact, it was already going up ahead. At 9.30, we had the retail sales for the UK, which came in like super, super better than expected. And this was the reaction in the pound but the reaction you would almost think somebody kind of may have had um, maybe some advance notice of what the retail sales were going to be and certainly the buying of the pound was very much has been very much against the run of play for the british pound as you know it's been absolutely excuse the pun pounded over the last uh, eight to nine weeks on uncertainty about brexit we have a new prime minister due to be uh, announced it's still another week to go and in fact every time uh, the headline with Bo with Boris Johnson in saying there's you know a no you know a no deal the pound has actually been sold off so every rally has been sold off in the pound but suddenly this morning on the back of the retail sales it's been a very strong move in the pound and there's been some very nice moves uh, on a short term on a short term basis whether that this rally is going to uh, you know end up the same as all the others and just you know roll over we don't know but the moves in the British pound have been sufficient to be able to take some very nice trades to the long side now the question is for well, which pound pair would you be looking to trade and this is where the matrix comes in because so say if you're going to have a look at all the um at all the pound pairs which I have actually got if you don't have a matrix what you would have to do is you would have to put up your uh, you know, you would have a, a, um, a profile such as this, and you have here, you see, this is just the daily charts. You've got the, uh, the cable, euro, pound, you can see here, pound, yen, I've got pound, Swiss, uh, and you've got the three commodity dollars at, at the bottom here against the uh, Canadian, uh, Aussie, and New Zealand. And in fact, of, of all the pound pairs, um, there are certainly very strong moves against the Swiss and the cable as well. On my Facebook page, uh, Forex, uh, Learn Forex Trading, I've actually been writing about these three cross pairs 
for the pound because they've been in a fantastic downtrend. And in fact, I actually said, I think it was yesterday, I said of the three, I thought possibly uh, the strongest move, any reversal would probably be against the Canadian. And in fact, it has turned out against the Canadian, certainly today. It doesn't look very much, but given, you know, this is the extent of the downtrend that we've had in on the daily chart, it's the move away from the volume point of control just it's been, as you can see, it's been absolutely relentless. Um, it was the Canadian because the Canadians also been selling off quite heavily this morning. So this is how you have to interpret these moves in the individual currencies and how they then relate to the actual pairs themselves. And what I have here, let me just have a look at the, here we are. This is the index, the pound index. And I'm just going to move it to the daily chart. There we are. Right. This is what I meant earlier when I said this is the move lower in the pound. Every attempt to rally, as we can see here, has been just snuffed out and it's carried on lower. And it's carried... Now, you could argue, well, is this is what we're seeing at the moment. Is this, in fact, uh, just another, you know, uh, rally to maybe uh, sucker in the some, you know, some traders think, well, it's had such a, a, a fall it's got to reverse and of course it's got to reverse everything reverses at some point certainly in the in the forex market but as you can see there have been some uh, some very solid buying of the british pound certainly this morning to go back to my csis quickly my multiple csis and you can see here in fact let me just highlight the pounds and here we are in fact this is the ranking of the british pounds uh, since well, really since seven o'clock this morning and then given an extra boost by the retail sales. And I was right. The strongest has been the um, uh, the, the pound Swiss, although that's matched fairly closely by the euro pound. We've got pound yen and pound Canadian is actually third, but it's the it's the highest it's the highest ranking of my three commodity cross pairs. So this is what you would do. This is how you start, if you like, your analysis by looking at what the individual currencies are doing, uh, obviously being aware of what news is, is is coming up. I mean, this morning, as I said, we had retail sales for the British pound and, you know, at, at 9.30. So any trade that you take, especially if you're on the faster time frames, you have to factor that in. Um, whether you then, if you're in a trade, you also have to factor in the crossovers. When London opens, as, all, as you know, when, um, when a new um, a time zone comes in, when fresh traders join, uh, join this market, you can have a complete uh, reversal of sentiment. It may be only temporary, but enough to sort of take you out of a trade, particularly if you are in the faster time phase. If you're on something like the 30 minute, the hour, then moving up, it's just part and parcel. You just absorb that noise and, you know, and you just monitor your, your trades and away you go. So that's what we were looking at this morning. I know there's been, you want to have a look at the Euro Aussie, yeah? Do you want to say something? Yeah, I'm going to pass over to David. He wants to say something and then we'll actually move on to the charts and see um, what's what's now likely to be happening in the session ahead. Thanks, darling, and a very warm welcome to you all. Hope you can hear me loud and clear. And I just wanted to jump in because um, this is an ideal opportunity to uh, explain the matrix in the context of the currency strength indicator because if you look at the hourly time frame uh, what's clear is that sentiment towards the British pound is universal but what's also interesting on the matrix itself once you start to look at the the numbers in terms of the ranking number of where a currency pair sits at the top of the ranking there, you've got the pound Swiss at just over 49, and you've got the euro pound at minus 54 down at the other end. And what that tells you is, is two things. First of all, that the, the differential between these two is fairly evenly balanced. In other words, from a numerical value, the bullish and bearish sentiment is evenly weighted across those pairs. But the second thing it also tells you the ranking ladder, if you look at the pound Aussie, for example, which is ranking at 32, which is well off, it's, it's the sixth lowest on the ranking ladder. It's well off the high of 48.49 on pound Swiss. And the reason for that, if you look at the currency strength indicator below, is that as, as a general uh, trend in terms of the price moves, the pound and the Aussie have been following one another around generally. 
Therefore, the strength of trend in that particular pair is much weaker than the strength of trend in the pound Swiss, which is at the top, because in that case, you've got the pound, which is rising very strongly indeed, or has been over this time horizon. And that's counterbalanced by the Swiss franc, the green line, which has been selling off very strongly. And that's the reason that you see the currencies, currency pairs ranked in that way and how they appear on the ladder because not only will the index reflect the sentiment towards a particular currency, which is part of what the currency matrix is about. In other words, is everybody in the market buying or selling this particular currency? And clearly right now, you know, the pound is being bought across the matrix entirely. There are no, there's no differential there. There's no currency pair where maybe there's some pound selling. It's all pound buying at the moment. And that's what the matrix does. And secondly, when you start to use it frequently, you'll very quickly get a grasp of what might be considered high or low in terms of the numerical values for the various time frames. You can see scanning across there, you have different values according to different time frames. That's just the nature of, of the mathematics behind how it's calculated. But very quickly, you'll get a feeling, a, a, an intuitive feeling that, for example, on a, on a six minute chart, 10 might be a high number or 15 might be a high number on a 10 minute chart, maybe 20 or 25 and so on and so forth. One of the things we're actually thinking of doing is actually incorporating that into the indicator. So you actually have a, a table, if you will, a little bit like uh, on the currency strength indicator below where you have the 80-20, which just gives a sense of when a currency is approaching or reaching an overbought or indeed into an overbought state or an oversold state. So we're thinking of incorporating that into the currency matrix in some way and looking at it from a currency pair perspective as opposed to the individual currencies below. And the other thing I was also going to say is that when you look at that imbalance between the top and the bottom, for example, if you look at the 10 minute, the value on the Swiss or the Aussie CAD is hopping up and down there is around about 14, whereas down at the negative level on the CAD Swiss at the other end of the spectrum, it's minus 25. So that tells you that there's there's much more of a, a of an imbalance there. There's there's more bearish sentiment than there is bullish sentiment in that particular time frame across that particular currency complex. So it's 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 more nuanced, if you will, and you've got exactly the same situation on the six minute time frame as well, where you've got seven or eight, you've got seven seven point five up plus seven point five at the top, and you've got minus seventeen point eight at the bottom. So it, it gives you a sense of I'm trying to think of an analogy. I suppose an analogy would be very much a seesaw, which where the fulcrum is in the center at zero, if you will, and then the weighting is whether you've got a more heavily bearish sentiment towards the currency pairs or, or a more heavily weighted bullish sentiment. And that, in a way, is another nuanced uh, aspect of the currency matrix. So I just wanted to highlight it because it, it just it perhaps explains why how we arrive at this ranking and why one particular pair is much lower in the ranking ladder when you look at it in the context of the currency strength indicator. I'm just going to pass back to Anna. And the other um, reason for looking at these currencies and currency pairs in multiple timeframes is obviously we've had these strong moves in in uh, certainly the pound and the euro. Uh, the pound driven by retail sales, the euro driven lower uh, for by, I don't think it's actual, uh, is it an official announcement or is it just speculation or rumor or what have you? Something to do with the ECB's uh, reassessment of their inflation target. Um, it's all it's all a bit been a bit confusing. If you go onto somewhere like Forex Live or your news feed, you'll just have maybe a couple of lines on it. But for whatever reason the market has inter interpreted that as uh, somehow there's some major change to uh, the, the, the the policy towards the inflation rate uh, uh, by the ECB. And of course we have a change of head of the ECB with Draghi retiring and we've got uh, Christine Lagarde 
um, taking over. Although I don't, has she actually been appointed yet? 100%. <laughs> no, no, I don't need to know. Her. But anyway, um, there's been this strong selling of, of, of the euro. So if you are trading the US session, you've had all this, you know, quite dramatic news and, you know, quite dramatic moves in these currencies. You now need to uh, see, well, okay, now everything's going to shift again because obviously they've got the US session. What is coming uh, along in terms of uh, fundamental news? Obviously, fundamental news pertinent to the local currency for that uh, time zone, obviously going to be the US dollar. And obviously, we're going to have news that's going to affect the Canadian dollar. But whatever comes ahead is, is up ahead. It's you're always going to be in the context of obviously of what has gone before. And by looking at, at a currency through the prism of being overbought and oversold, where you've had this extension of price, you've had some momentum in some pairs, um, it, are they going to pull back? So are you perhaps going to be looking to trade uh, the counter to what has been going on this morning? Or is that simply just going to be a pull back and you know the, the prevailing trend from uh, this session is going to is going to carry on and this is how you have to look at this this market it is a 24 hour market but we all join it join it at different times of, of the day you know when different items of news have uh, you know have, have gone through the market so it's a bit like you know, it's a bit like a carousel that's going round and round at different speed. You know, sometimes it speeds up and sometimes it slows down. And what we have to do is we jump on and off all the time. And it's, you know, it is it is perpetual. It is well, it's perpetual motion from um, late Sunday evening to late Friday. And I, I think the carousel is a nice a nice analogy because it goes, it slows down, gets faster, slows down, gets. And what we have to do is uh, jump on and off uh, without face planting in either direction. So a lot of decisions to make, you know, a lot of things to take on board when you trade uh, the forex market. It's, superficially, it seems very straightforward. All you're being asked to do is decide whether something is going up or down. But in fact, there is a, there's a whole um, a web of complexity behind that. It's not complicated. It's just complex and you just have to tease everything apart. Using multiple time frames as well. I've got the hour. Sometimes they use the 30 minute chart. Uh, it really does depend on, and you can see here, the overextension is even more pronounced on the 30 minutes. I think possibly on my profiles, I have 30 minutes, three minutes, and I have a Renko chart. And I would be looking at that and I think, oh, fantastic. That is so over, you know, over on this time frame. I say, and I look at that, I look at the pound Swiss, that's already looks looks like it's been moving. The euro pound is also very overextended. So this is at this point, I would go step down and I'm not sure I've got a pound Swiss, but I'll move over to David. David's got it there. I've got a euro pound. Pound. Let's have a look. Euro pound here. Yeah, I move straight over to David, and this is the sort of uh, profile that then I would have. I have a, a, a daily chart for context. I have the 30 minutes, as I said. Let me just change the template. This is this dramatic move lower that we had uh, following that piece of news. So in fact, this pair was driven on both sides. It, it was. It's it's a perfect example where two items of news uh, actually drove the, the 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 respective currencies. So you had strong buying of the pound anyway because of retail sales then you had the news on the uh, on from the ecb strong selling of the of the euro and that that that's almost what you're looking for all the time david isn't it you want a you want an you want equal drivers on either side you know asymmetric driver is uh, is is sometimes not so good so that's my 30 minute chart and in fact it's a nice break away from the volume point of control and this is what i would have and in fact i'd have a csi up here as well on the first on the three minute chart we've had the move lower we're now back at the volume point of control so we're in congestion so it's a case of perhaps now being patient and looking at my renko this is the, the move lower in the Renko, which I use because, the, you know, when you're on the faster time frames, what you want is you want to try and smooth out some of that very spiky, whippy price action. And this is what the, uh, the, the Renko does. So we'll have to wait and see if, in fact, what we see on the 30 minute CSI, we're going to, we're going to get this reversal or maybe just get a, a, a pullback before the primary uh, principal trend is, uh, is reversed, which is 
which is lower for the euro and more buying for the British pound. That's, uh, shall I move over to you? Because David's actually got the pound Swiss on his side and uh, we'll see how, um, how you can interpret the sort of price action we see on this pair and look for trading opportunities, but using Ninja Trader. <laughs> Just transfer, there we go. Click that, that should be coming up any second. Hopefully you can see it on your screen. Looking over on ours, yeah, it's there, terrific. Okay, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm always hunting out reversals. I'm afraid that's, uh, the, that is my first port of call. Uh, doesn't have to be yours, but uh, it's certainly where I always look on the CSI as my starting point. I'm always looking for a currency that's overbought or oversold and matching them up and looking for those opportunities for reversal trades because uh, very simply, it means I get in early and I make more money doing it that way rather than waiting for the trends to develop and then jumping on the existing trend. That's not to say I don't jump on existing trends, but generally speaking, what I'm looking for are those reversal points where you get in early. This is the pound Swiss. I've got the one minute here. I've got three minute and five minute across the top. So pretty quick up there and then down into the 10 minute, the 15 minute and finally over onto the daily down here at the bottom right hand side. And let's just pull up the 10 minute, for example. We had this big surge earlier on. This was uh, there was a lot of uh, Europe sentiment in there, and uh, we had the volatility, big spike in volume. But what's interesting about the the rally higher off that was uh, yes, the market was rising, some weakness thereafter. But look at the volume falling away, and uh, it's no great surprise that uh, when you're looking for that sort of opportunity, that's what you're looking for from a certainly from a VPA perspective at any rate. Rising prices, falling volume. Classic sign of uh, of a weak trend or a trend that at, that at any rate is running out of of, uh, uh, of momentum. What you then also had at the top here was a two bar reversal. You overlay one on top of the other. For example, on a 20 minute time frame, this is on 10. So if you go to 20 minute, if you lay one on top of the other, what would you have? You'd have a market that's risen and has then fallen again. So you'd have a little body and you'd have a nice deep wick to the upper body. Decent volume below, so you're looking at a reversal off that particular candle then of course what you'd also be looking at is the CSI because on the CSI those two currencies are very very strongly overbought and oversold and you're just waiting for that reversal to develop it's as simple as that down onto the other time frames similar sort of picture we had the volatility triggered big spike really no follow-through volume falling away now we've got the uh, the volume starting to build to the downside decent volume under there and you can you know compare it across what you're looking at this is the nice thing with ninja is it uh, it gives you it prints the precise time it's literally this is one o'clock this is the us open this is um london open this is where we were earlier in the day and this is the european open so in terms of a volume uh, analysis profile we can go from really from here eight o'clock right the way through over here and all of this volume over here this is through through our night this is the Far Eastern Asia session. So we're comparing volume really, really proximately from here right the way through to over here. So we've got decent selling pressure under here. Nice word spread candle on that last uh, down candle. No wick to the lower uh, body or, or upper body. So straight through, good volume underneath. And, uh, you know, it's a nice move developing. If we hop up on to go to the other extreme, if you will, up onto the one minute. Volume point of control sitting there. We had some, uh, we, we, talked about this this morning in terms of breaking away from a channel and this makes the point because what breakaway trading often gets is a bad press because breakaways are, are often considered as fake outs and people say well, you can't trade breakaways because you never know whether it's a true or, or, or a fake move well you do if you apply volume to it it's very simple trend monitors remain uh, steadfastly bright red we had a minor transition here when we we're in congestion but it never went through into bright blue. Volume point of control was here. We had these really two nice channels of defined by the, the upper and lower levels on the accumulation distribution indicator. So we've got a nice ceiling in here, nice floor in here. Where you choose to get in is, is really up to you. Uh, you know, it's, it's, are you ready to get in on the first candle? You know, as this one develops, good volume under there. Or are you a little bit nervous at that sort of proximity? Do you want to wait a little bit? We had a little uh, volatility candle here with a pullback, then a reversal straight back inside it again, uh, which is what we expect to see. Now we're starting to see that market break down again. 
We had a little bit of a pause point here. Look at the volume under this candle. We've had an effort to rise, very narrow spread candle, ton of volume going in, market going nowhere, very weak. The analogy that we use in the program to describe that is really of driving a car on an icy hill and you apply more pressure to the accelerator or the gas and the wheels start to spin as you go up the hill and gradually you get to a point where you're just spinning and standing still. You're applying more and more pressure to the accelerator, but you're actually not moving forward at all. And at some point, you actually start sliding back down the hill. Um, and that's really the, the way to think of it is where you're, the, the market is selling heavily into this candle. It's very weak. And therefore, this market is not going to rally. It's a narrow spread candle. You're trying to sell into weakness. Had this been a true candle, in other words, not an anomaly, then you would have seen this up here somewhere. You've seen a nice widespread up candle on good volume. You haven't. You've seen uh, weakness appearing on, on that particular. And this applies to all time frames, not just on the one minute. Could be a one day candle, could be whatever. We're now also moving down into a low volume area on the volume point of control. This volume histogram prints the the associated volume with these regions. In other words, it, it brings time into the equations because you're now looking at volume, price and time on the right hand side. And what that tells you as a trader is that you approach these regions then you expect the market to move through there relatively quickly because there's nothing in the way of volume at any rate to present a, a platform of support, if you will, in exactly the same way of this price-based regions here present platforms of support or ceilings of resistance. Volume works in exactly the same way. Trend minus is bright red. That's fine. It's just supporting us in our analysis. It's helping to keep us in the trade as it develops. Up onto a slightly slower time frame, the three minute. What's that telling us? Well, first of all, it's telling us we've got a little bit of, of potential support coming into play here. Relatively minor. These thicker lines here will certainly come into play. Let, just move that out of the way. Apologies, that's the chat box. So we're what, eight or nine pips away from this level here. So once we get through, if we get through this one, we've got a low volume node here, should go through that fairly rapidly. But once it gets down to this level, we've got a very strong very well developed area of potential support coming into play and you can see why because we had this quite extensive congestion period earlier on so we've got a good strong level here and another one immediately below it so over this um what is it 10 pips here we've got a very uh, strong potential area of support coming into play and in addition to that we've also got this huge amount of volume sitting here so as traders, our expectation is, is what? It's very simple. As we get down to this level, we expect the market to congest at the very least. So don't be surprised if this market moves down here and then we see some congestion sideways price action and we're just going to have to be patient, possibly wait for another congestion phase to build and then a further breakdown to the downside in due course. But the expectation is that the market will congest at this level. So when it does, it's no great surprise and we're suddenly up on the one minute thinking, oh dear, what's happening? Why, why is the market not falling like a stone any longer? Well, you know, you look at your slower time frames in inverted commas, depending on what they may be, whether you're a 135 or 123 or 3515, whatever it is, and that will give you additional information. If we go up to five, we get some more information. We've got this level here, which is certainly going to come into play down here. If we break through this lot, then to the downside, the volume is falling away. As you can see, we've got relatively light price based support to like to come into play later. And if we get down to this level, we've got a nice low volume node before we get down to much, much uh, further developed support at this lower level down the chart. That's a fair way away. In terms of trend monitor, you can see here it's uh, bright red. That's fine. Bright red on three, bright red transition now on five. So we've gone through the full spectrum here. We've gone blue into darker blue, out into darker red. And now we've come out the other side into, into bearish red, bright red for the, the move lower. This is just starting to transition. You can see the, the this trend line, which is part and parcel of the trend monitor. It's actually two indicators in one. You can see it on all of these. Just make those a little bigger. There we go. It just gives a sense of how far the trend has moved from this fulcrum of zero, if you will. And it also gives a, 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 a sense of the strength of the trend as well, the steepness of the line, if you will. So we're moving pretty strongly here, but we haven't yet transitioned into to red or even a darker red. We, we wouldn't expect at this stage because this is a much lower time frame. Down onto 15. 
that's just reflecting things at a much uh, much more even pace, if you will. And in terms of where we're going on the 15 minute time frame, well, again, we've got the volume point of control sitting here on this time frame, and therefore we will expect to see the market congest around this period, around this uh, price region anyway, purely because we've got, got the volume point of control there. And up, finally, up onto the daily, you know, what's been going on in terms of the daily? Well, it's very bearish. We have this extensive congestion phase and really just makes the point that it doesn't matter whether you're looking at a one month or a daily, or rather a one minute or a daily. The concepts and principles are the same. Two bar reversal here, very strong platform in below here, which was breached. A, a ceiling of resistance here it did break through here, but never followed through. It's been tested and retested here and now it's broken away and we've got rising volume on the down move on these two having a bit of a rally today but this this area that was a ceiling uh, was a platform rather has now become a ceiling and looks to be capping off this rally for the pound at any rate on an intraday basis but longer term very very bearish still although if you go out onto the CSI daily weeklies you may well find that uh, you know it's now so beaten down that it's potentially setting up for reversal and indeed there'll be a lot of traders who'll be looking at that opportunity for sure purely because not necessarily because they've got a csi but purely because it is so heavily heavily oversold and been beaten down for so long the logic will be that at some point it has to reverse and of course it will um, it's a question of when and volume will actually tell you that nice little, little uh, rally here look at the volume very weak not particularly strong for the time being and uh, just looking for further downside what's interesting about the three minute here we've got a little wick to the lower body here we've got some decent volume under that so we know there's a little bit of buying coming in under that candle so people who've made money in this uh, trading phase you know they're now looking to close out there's some buying coming in certainly as from the volume so if you see the market rally a little bit it's not going to be no great surprise because you're expecting it because you see it in terms of the volume profile that's what you expect to see it comes as no great surprise to a volume trader and a similar sort of picture down here on 10 a little bit of a rally going on what have we got deep wick to the lower body little bit of a hammer candle if you like but certainly some buying in here decent volume under there and also we're coming into the 130 don't think there's any major news per se for the US markets there's no red flag there's no red flag stuff is there don't. yeah it's fully fed and unemployment so there's a little bit of data but it's not uh, it's not huge so you know that's again as I said this morning going through any news release, uh, you've got to be aware of it. You've got to decide whether you're going to trade ahead of it. You're going to sit on your hands and wait. If you're trading longer term, then news is part and parcel. You just sit through it. That's it. You have to you have to accept the fact if you're on dailies and weeklies that news will come and go and it will appear on the price price action. And you just allow for that in very wide stop losses if you're trading slower term. If you're trading intraday, then you've got to be aware of it and you've got to make a decision. Do I trade ahead of it? How far do I trade down to it? Or do I avoid it and just wait for it to settle and then I trade the news after it's been released? It's as simple as that. I'm going to pass back to Anna at that point. Uh, before I do, just sorry, just um, let's just go over to the, let's just see what's going on here. It's just these on the different time frames. That's on five. Still buying of the, the Aussie that's uh, picked up again. Let's go up onto 10. This is the pound up at the top. This is the Swiss franc, which is the green one. And over onto 15, this is the pound again, just starting to kick down. This is the Swiss franc, rising quite strongly. And if you were to look at things like, for example, the pound Aussie, as I said earlier on, these are following one another around. So clearly there is no trend in there at the moment. And that's what the CSI also does. It also highlights, not only does it highlight which pairs to, to investigate and consider for trading opportunities, but it also highlights those to avoid very quickly. If they're moving together, that means they're in congestion. There may be some differential uh, momentum between the two, but generally speaking, if they're moving around like that, there isn't going to be any trading opportunity in there. It's a congestion phase. It may certainly be one to put on the radar from a congestion perspective um, if you're looking for a breakaway trade, because at some point, those two 
those two currencies will part ways. One will go in one direction and one will go in the other. At that point, a trend will develop away from congestion. So it tells you so much. Same is true, for example, if you look at the Swiss franc against the yen. They're rising together pretty much at the moment. The, uh, the dollar and the Canadian here. So if you're looking at the dollar cat, for example, as an opportunity, not much going on there in terms of 15 right now because the, the two are, are literally following one another around. But at some point they will break away. Just have a look, quick look at the currency array. This is on five. This is on 10. And I've isolated out the euro here. And you can see basically the uh, not only the strength of the trend for, for selling of the euro, what has been heavy selling of the euro, and no great surprise to see it's against the pound because the pound has seen such strong buying. So it's down at the bottom here. But it's pretty much universal across the complex. It's just starting to move a little bit now. Let's, uh, let's go up onto 10. Pretty much the same picture there. Very strong trends in the euro pound. But equally, once you get to those regions, what this is also now telling you, certainly on 15, again, you can see the euro pound down here at the bottom. This solid line is signaling that this currency pair now is approaching a potential oversold situation. When it goes to bright red and the brackets are removed, and equally up here, when it goes to bright blue with the brackets removed, then that is potentially an overbought currency pair as opposed to a currency and therefore one certainly to look at on the chart and consider for further investigation. When it's these darker colors, that is merely telling you that it's uh, approaching a potentially overbought and equally you get a, an approaching oversold down at the bottom here. So that's what the currency array does. It gives you this information about the strength of the trend. It gives you information about the sentiment. Is the sentiment universal? Are we seeing universal selling of the euro? Pretty much, yes. But now we're starting to see maybe just perhaps a little bit of a lifting of the, the euro CAD and also the euro Swiss maybe as well. So let me just pass back to Anna at that point. I've actually stayed on the uh, on the euro pound, uh, my euro pound profile. Uh, and in fact, what I've done is I've put the CSI up in the top left here, which is what I normally had. I had the the uh, the daily chart up, which is uh, which I just have to flick up when I need to see it because I wanted to see what um, whether in fact we are going to see the start of a reversal that we can see clearly on let's move that on the 30 minute we can see here we see these are very very overextended at the top and, and at the bottom and if we go on the hour as well we can see although that's still sort of got a little bit perhaps a little bit more to climb and that's perhaps a little bit more to sell but you know this these two currencies are reflecting those two items of news that we had earlier on in the session but the thing is, as I said, we come into this. Uh, this is a, you know, this is a perpetual motion in this market, and uh, at some point we're going to have to jump on on the carousel. And this is where, uh, first of all, we have to decide on our time frames. Um, are we going to see if we can take some pips on the faster time frames, uh, or you know, do we want to try and trade the hours and and the fours and the two hours and and the dailies? At the moment, I'm just going to focus on the on the shorter or the faster time frame, simply because um, it's nice to see two currencies at such an extreme on uh, on on the CSI, and this is where you have to go down to um, the granular level. You have to look at the, at the uh, Renko. Now the Renko does look a little bit different than we had before because. What I did was I looked at the indicator. The way you apply the indicator on MT5, it's slightly different on MT4, is you, you have to apply it to the minute chart. And then what you have is you have the option uh, to run the indicator either based on, eight, on an eight, the ATR function, which basically the indicator itself gives you the value of those brick sizes and the, or the box size of the, the bricks. And at the moment it's running at 1.73 pips, but if you want to run a, a fixed value, you can do so. You can just uh, click that down and go to fixed. I'm actually going to leave it on the ATR because 1.73 is actually quite a, um, you know, it's quite a fast uh, uh, value. You know, it's a, it's a, a small value and the bricks, the bricks are going to be, um, are going to form 
fairly quickly. I'm also experimenting at the moment, and I've got uh, I've got a couple of things set up on other charts where um, looking to use Renko on slightly slower time frame, maybe the hourly chart. And here it's a case of well, what do you set the brick size to? And I've been playing around with with some higher values, and hopefully I'll have something to show maybe in a couple of weeks' time because what we're asked. <laughs> A lot of people trade this market, still have full-time jobs, and whilst it's great to be able to trade the faster time frames because this market moves so fast all the time and, and you can take advantage of the moves that are uh, precipitated by you know, uh, fundamental news, the crossover periods, there's some fantastic uh, potential trades. You do have to stay you know, fairly close to your screen or have access to you know, what is happening in your account. And, then at the other end of the scale, you have, well, okay, well, I look at the daily charts and the four hours, but then the, the problem there is, can be that, um, I know you can trade micro lots, but you still do have to have some, you know, I'm not huge amounts of money in your account. Um, and it's just, it'd be nice to do something in the middle, you know, somewhere where you can perhaps use a combination of time frames perhaps use something like a Renko, see it, wait for a setup. You do have to be a little bit patient and wait, then just put it on and I wouldn't say forget about it, but just leave it to run and allow something like uh, the Renko to sort of run the trade for you. And that's what I'm looking at at the moment. Anyway, this is very much on a uh, faster time frame. So that's how you apply the indicator on MT5. Let's get that down. What happens is this is what uh, this is what the uh, the end result is. Now, as you can see here, we've actually applied, we've actually done, we've tweaked the indicator in such a way that you have the option to either attach standard indicators, moving averages, whatever you whatever you wish to do, or you can apply uh, quantum tools. And the quantum tools, the certainly the trend dots, the trend monitor work exceptionally well with the Renko and they actually give you, I'm not going to say almost, you know, entry and exit signals and holding on signals, but they will certainly highlight those points uh, on the chart that you say, do you know what, that is probably, you know, going to be, you know, uh, probably give me a potential trade. You always use it in conjunction with a time-based chart. Now, what we were looking at here, we were going to see whether in fact, this was going to carry on lower, and it's been sitting on the volume point of control here. It's in, in congestion. We've had the move lower, and now we are waiting. And in fact, whether the reversal that is being highlighted on the 30 minute chart is actually going to start, because like all trends, all trends start from reversal points. They start from a reversal point, and at a reversal point, most, most traders. Uh, um, sometimes mistake that a reversal is like a v-shape it goes down and then rushes back up well it doesn't what it does price action tends to it moves strongly in one direction and then it will congest then it will you have an accumulation phase you will have a a pause point you you may have a phase where the market is suddenly imbalanced it's had the dramatic move lower or higher and it then is range bound. Um, we talk about the volume point of control being the fulcrum of the market. You could also see it as the market being at that at that particular moment in balance. You know, there's no particular desire to move this strongly in one direction or the other. So that is what we're waiting at the mo for at the moment. And the entry to uh, wherever it was going to go, either up or down. I would use something like the Renko. And in fact, here we're having already seeing potentially a change in the trend monitor. It goes into this uh, in in between color uh, away from this congestion phase. But the actual, if you like, the actual point that potentially is an entry point, it would be a combination of seeing what is happening on the CSI. So let's go down to a very fast CSI here. What are we seeing here? We're actually seeing potentially across. This is just a three minute chart where you can see pound was going up, reverse lower. If we have a nice little cross there and that carries on, we want to see that reflected in what we can see on the Renko. I want to see red, uh, blue dots and I want to see that 
bright blue as well and I want to see a nice strong move away from the volume point of control on the three minute chart and using the volume point of control as well it's great for placing the stop losses because the market tells you the chart tells you where would you place your stop loss well your stop loss will be somewhere down there and you can afford to be quite tight on a stop and if you get stopped out does it really matter you know you, the risk on that trade is in terms of pip value is not going to be very high at all and then looking at the 30 minute chart where we've been looking waiting for this reversal if you like where we've had this uh, overextension is it's been basing on this sort of support line here but what's also interesting is the move lower was accompanied by a degree of volatility as you would expect volatility was triggered here in that move then we had another volatile volatility candle then we had a an effort to rise here but it's um uh, the volume wasn't very high. It had a wick to the bottom of that candle, but it kind of told us it wasn't going to go very, very far. It carried on lower. This is the candle, which is quite uh, important because what we have here it triggered the volatility. We have buying coming in at the bottom of that candle. We've got a wick. We had a, a, um, a retrace to within the spread of that candle, and now it's looking, it's wanting to move higher. But all signal, really, all picked up originally from the 30 minute and the hourly CSI. So let's have a look. So coming along and, you know, coming, joining this, this uh, you know, the markets at these different times, you have to sort of know what's going, what's gone on, what is going on at the moment, and, you know, hopefully, uh, potentially see what is likely to be happening, uh, you know, in the session ahead. And don't forget, of course, anything with the British pound, you have got the London fix uh, later on at about four o'clock. So, you know, you've got a window of what, a couple of hours, David, where perhaps you've got more volatility. And we've got a euro index as well to, to tell us, to help us on our way. Oh, this has changed, there we are. And we have a pound index similarly here. Let's change that to, I've got five minutes and five minutes. So, as I said, we've, you have all the tools, the information is there, you simply have to put it together. And, you know, but you may, given that it's been in congestion for some time, you know, you may get a sort of an effort to, to move and then it just carries on sideways. And then, you know, you look at your CSI, think, well, you know, nothing's going to happen there. Or you could put a limit order in and see what happens and go and investigate another pair. So let's have a look at the 30 minute here. And certainly, the, is the pound Swiss still moving, David, on your side? It's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's had a little rally, so it's, it's picking up down and down again. Yeah, this, it's, it's had a little rally, as a, uh, certainly it's moved there, so you go down to the, let's have a look at the four minute here. Yeah, we've got, yeah, and, and as you can see why, it's uh, because it's had a little cross, you've got the pound sort of turning down slightly, and the Swiss going back up and it's going, going back down again. So this, this little micro moves in these trends. There's a nice buying of looks like the Aussies being bought again. Well, certainly you've got some selling in the in the New Zealand dollar. Now look at the at the, the US dollar, uh, which is interesting. It, that's sort of going down. Well, it's it's not really you know strong direction one way or another. But when the two lines are moving in parallel, so you've got the New Zealand and the US dollar there. Probably that is telling you that um, you know range bound, moving moving sideways, not enough of you know not enough divergence if you like between the two currencies to give us uh, a chance of a half decent move. And um, I think I'll just stay. I should stick with the euro pound. See see what happens really. Or it could just be nothing's going to happen. It's going to move sideways, as we can see here on the thirty minute within the spread of this candle. When you've had volatility, it can be a bit of a grind, the subsequent candles to, uh, and you almost have to wait until they clear the uh, the top and or the bottom of, of this candle. The volatility candle itself gives you another uh, perspective on support and resistance. And of course, what we need, we want to see lots of volume coming in here, lots of spike, uh, lots of wicks to the bottom of the candle, telling there's lots of price support. And uh, as you see, it all starts in the faster time frames and the Renko. The Renko, if, you know, it just, um, it just makes life so stress-free. It really, really does. It just, look at the charts, look at the Renko, 
look at the indicators and uh, you know pick your moment to jump onto that uh, carousel are you taking notes dear they oh, yeah. taking notes my goodness <laughs> I said something new. <laughs> oh, I know what I came with this morning. So another definition of the volume point of control. We call it the fulcrum of the market. We call it the uh, in the market imbalance. But it's actually what it is. It's volume over time. It's the 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 amount of, if you like, the transacted volume over a period of time. And what I have here, sorry, I just want to. Um, uh, I've actually moved the histogram to the left of the chart, which you can do, but because uh, I wanted this a little bit clearer over here. But you can. Act actually have it on the other side now the good news about this is if you can see on the histogram here this is volume this is the greatest volume over time at this point on the chart now what's really interesting here that if it clears if it gets up beyond this level here beyond these two pivots what we have is a low volume a low volume node here created when we had this very dramatic move lower on volatility but if it gets here what the, my expectation is that it will go there fairly fast. So what the VPOC also does, the, the, looking at the pattern of the histogram, it also gives you a, a, a view of how fast or how, uh, um, how difficult it's going to be for price to move through a region on the chart. And what you want is when you have these called low volume nodes, um, you, you, the expectation is it's going to move through fairly quickly. Anything else you want to add to that, Dave? Oh, that's, that's it. Fine. And I'll just um, be patient and wait, which I'm afraid, you know, for me is, um, will be a first, won't it? <laughs> so I don't, unlike David, I don't have a lot of patience. Right. Anything else you want to say to that? No, the, uh, Do you want to move back to you? Do you want to cover yeah, the pound Swiss? I'm just going to move you back to David and you can wrap up as well. Wrap up on the pound Swiss, just flick this over for you. Uh, just see where we're going. That's it, show my screen. There we go. Let's move that out of the way. There we are. And um, uh, we were talking about re entries a little bit earlier on. If you're, if you're not comfortable on taking reversal trades, if you're looking for an opportunity to jump into a trend, you know, these sorts of candles, this is, this is quite a, a, a strong example. But where you get these rallies, You've got a lot of volume under there. The market's tried to rally big wick to the upper body. You know, that is not looking particularly strong following that particular candle. So if you're looking for an entry into a trend that's already underway, you know, these are the candles to look for. Sometimes they come like this. Sometimes they come after a period of, of congestion. Then you'll get one at the end, maybe decent volume underneath. Sometimes they come on very low volume. Market tries to rally in a very weak response to the rally. And, uh, you know, it's it's another pickup into the momentum lower. You can also see Trend Monis is bright red here. We had a little bit of a pause point here. Now we've gone back to bright red again, bright red on five. And this is now well into transition as well on on uh, on the 10 minute time frame, which is nice. Just confirming that uh, we're starting to, you know, see that sentiment ripple through across the time horizons of our multiple time frames and finally down onto 15 here you can start to see the trend monitor here is again transitioning now away from the bullish and starting to move into the bearish the trend monitor works on the renko in exactly the same way it just takes a slightly more considered view of the chart it's looking at and it helps to keep you in because that's the key to this business is staying in once you've got a decent position in the market and you've made some money you want to maximize that you want to stay in to, to take the maximum you can from that particular move before it runs out of steam and the trend monitor has been designed to do that and with the trend line you can see it here now it's starting to dive below the fulcrum here on that particular time horizon we're below here a little bit flat there diving strongly here a little bit flat on this one for the time being and it's diving down to the to the midpoint here on this particular time horizon as well so you know it's all there it's uh, it's just a question of being patient waiting for the trades to come deciding what your tactical approach is going to be to the market and then applying volume price analysis supported by the the, the fantastic tools we've developed for for ourselves, for traders around the world, we have 20 years experience of trading between us. So we have 40 years between the two of us. Been doing this for a long, long, long time. So it's just passing that information on to you and also the indicators as well, which we use every day, I have to stress. That's us done for now. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for coming along today. We do appreciate the time you spend with us. And we will be back in, what's the time now? We will be back at 3... 
3.15 our time, which is roughly an hour and 20, 25 minutes from now. So if you're coming along to that one, that's on the index futures and commodities, basically futures trading on NinjaTrader. You're more than welcome. Look forward to seeing you there. If not, enjoy the rest of the trading day and we will see you again next week. So thanks so much and see you soon and bye for now.